So here you have Cannabis Industries Australia. I'm just telling you that I'm doing this as an, um, a clip I'm going to stick in with the rest of the video because I really botched up my explanation of this. I confused myself, so if I couldn't understand what I was saying, I don't think you could. So I'm re-recording just the quick bits of um, the basics of who's involved with Cannabis Industries Australia. So here we have on the right, we have a current extract from ATSIC dated the 5th of August 2020. If you look over here at a document search for Cannabis Industries Australia, you can see that the last document lodged at ATSIC was the 10th of December 2019. And so ultimately this uh, extract here is as current today as it was in August when it was extracted. I'm telling you this because, um, well, Dolph's on here as a director in 2020. As of right now, he's a director and shareholder. Now, I want to explain the creation of this company and how it moved from when it was created to what went on. So originally, oh, we'll go back up here. You can see here that the company was registered on the 15th of February, 15th of February 2017. Now when that occurred, there were the original directors which there are I've left a link in the description for the archive org that's got these extracts you can look at all the past extracts and see for yourself that the original startup was philip john dixon adrian peter brannock and mark darwin his middle name's james but he doesn't like to use it much so they started the Cannabis Industries Australia on the 15th of February 2017. They were the directors and shareholders. Then, in, um, as you can see here, that Adrian Brannock and Mark Darwin were directors for a very short period of time. And that they ceased being a director when they got Dolph Cook in. As you can see here, Dolph Cook was appointed the very same day that Adrian Brannock and Mark Darwin ceased. Now, they needed Dolph Cook in the Cannabis Industries Australia, and they've called it Industries Australia, is well, Cannabis Industries, because it's an industrial license that Dolph Cook has got. Now they needed his license to be able to justify the legitimacy of the business and Phil Dixon's interpretation of medical, industrial, you know, it's all hemp. Uh, that's the justification. But anyway, so back on the 15th of February, 2017, we had Philip Dixon, Adrian Brannock and Mark Darwin that started up Cannabis Industries Australia. A month later, they bought in Dolph and Dolph Cook and Adrian Brannock and Mark Darwin stopped being directors and only just continued to be shareholders. Now, they were all shareholders except for um, Dolph Cook right from the word go from the 15th of February 2017. Dolph Cook started being a shareholder on the 23rd of March, about a month later. Now, as it occurs that if you look over here on the documents, now to change a director you have to lodge certain forms. To change shareholders you have to lodge certain forms. Now, without even looking and knowing that on the 14th of August 2018, the very day of Adrian Brannock's final bankruptcy hearing, 
shareholders changed everything. Now, the shares were previously held in four names, Adrian Brannock, Mark Darwin, Philip Dixon and Dolph Cook. But on the 14th of August 2018, on the day of Adrian Brannock's final bankruptcy hearing, Adrian Brannock transferred his chair into the name of Nyepi. Mark Darwin transferred his share into the name of his partner's company, uh, Loved Ones Tribe. And Philip Dixon changed his into Dixon Rainmaker, which is all 100% him. So when you get down to the shareholders down here, that's how you get the current position today of the shareholders. Dolph Cook is the only individual named as a shareholder. The rest are companies. But Dolph Cook, uh, Nyepi is Adrian Brannock, Loved Ones Tribe is Mark Darwin, and Dixon Rainmaker is Philip Dixon. Now, after, well, actually on the 14th of August over here, when he put those shares into Nyepi's name, Adrian Brannock, he had just done, six days before, he had changed Nyepi into his wife's name in the, in the attempt to avoid the discovery in bankruptcy. Well, not in an attempt. He did succeed. It was not an attempt. He did it. He concealed it successfully from the bankruptcy and from discovery. Now, if you look at all the other documents lodged, there's only been seven documents lodged. The only time that shareholdings have changed have actually been on the date of Adrian Brannock's final bankruptcy hearing. So all of the individuals must have put in at the same time to change out of these individual names down here and put them into company names. Creating a barrier between them and responsibility. And Dolph Cook, you should actually be aware of that. You are in the most vulnerable position. You know, I think you got yourself in way over your head, boy, and you just don't know what to do about it, do you? But you know what? Sitting back and doing nothing is just making the problem worse. I mean, sure. If you want to... <laughs> want to challenge me on it and yes Philip Dixon if you want to have a challenge if you want to challenge me on my incorrect information and getting your testimony wrong um, I'd be happy to share the quote from the transcript where you actually said these things it's not my words they're yours boy <laughs> anyway I'm going to cut this now and put in the next bit that Sorry, I hope I clarified how cannabis industries is still associated with four people. It has always been associated with four people. Um, well, Dolph Cook came in a month later. But Dolph Cook, as you can see, is still current share capital. He's got a quarter share in Cannabis Industries Australia and he is still listed currently as a director. So no matter what people want to say, it's on paper, you are responsible Dolph. It's as simple as that. And I tell you what, I'd be worried about what they're making you responsible for. <laughs> you know, you know better than us what they're like. 